It's Entomology Animated, celebrating the amazing biology of insects using the power of digital animation. Ding. Hey there, this is Eric Keller for Entomology Animated. In this video, I want to continue uh, working on the mouth parts for my honeybee model. And mostly this is just uh, an attempt to understand how these parts work, depending on what the honeybee is trying to do. So, here is a render of the honeybee in Redshift. Once again, this has no hair applied to it, so it's going to look very strange. It doesn't quite look like a honeybee without the hair. Uh, but we'll get to working with the hair uh, in a subsequent video. I'm thinking probably the next video I'll talk about doing the hair. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of figure out, you know, pick up where we left off in the last video and kind of figure out how these various different mouth parts move and fit together. And this is definitely a work in progress. So I haven't figured it out yet, but I wanted to share with you some of my process in the hopes that we can kind of uh, figure it out together, I guess. So I'm just focusing on the head. So this is just the head. In fact, this scene doesn't have the body of the honeybee in it at all. What I'd like to do is if I can sort out how the mouth parts work and if I can come up with a decent rig, then eventually I want to incorporate it into the larger honeybee model. What I think is really interesting about using CG in this way, as opposed to just making up monsters or robots or doing some kind of sci-fi thing, is the process of building these things, rigging and animating them is a way to explore the organism itself. Um, in an ideal world, I can imagine uh, a biology class in which there is no more dissection of any animals and instead rather than dissection students are tasked with actually putting together a working model of a specific organism and these days that's more and more possible because even though I'm using Maya right here you know Blender is a perfectly comparable piece of software and it's free so in my dream utopian biology class of the future the students would be working with CG and using it as a way to learn as opposed to just as a way to produce entertainment. All right, so let's take a look. I have a simple animation. Let's go to the starting point at the beginning of the timeline. So the rig that I created for this model is pretty janky. It's not great. If I turn on curves and joints, you can see it's kind of a mess, but it's good enough just for me to understand how these parts work. So this video is not really about how you should rig a B model. Um, maybe it's a cautionary tale on how not to rig a B model, but in order to rig it correctly, I have to know how these parts work. So that's what I'm, that's the goal here. And so uh, let's go back to turning off the curves and the joints. And so my starting point at the beginning of the timeline on frame zero, I have the illustrative pose. So this is the or the rigging pose, whatever you want to call it. I don't think that the mouth parts are very often splayed out like this in real life it doesn't really seem to help the bee that much but in the purpose of matching my illustration so for example uh from the famous snodgrass book you can see i had to space them out like this so i could just see what's going on the other thing is there's lots of stuff missing that i haven't added yet because either i don't know how to add it or it just doesn't seem to be as important at the moment so for example if i select my head here um, you can see there is a, a cavity back here, but it's very rudimentary. I believe that there is a piece missing that I need to add at some point. You know, you can see here is the cavity, right? And here are the parts that I've modeled. So I haven't modeled this part yet because I'm still not exactly sure how, how it works or what it looks like. The other part that's missing that is important is a lot of these connective tissues and muscles that you see right here in these diagrams. I haven't added these yet because number one, all I have is these two dimensional diagrams and I'm still trying to sort that out. So a lot of these parts are missing. So when you see these things magically move, it's because there are muscles that are not depicted moving them. That's my beginning position where I have all my parts worked out. So uh, what I did is I set some very simple keyframes around frame 30 to kind of show what happens when the bee is actually taking a drink. So this is a more lifelike representation, or as far as I can tell, of how the mouth parts work. So when our honeybee worker wants to take a drink of honey or water or something like that, it forms a straw with the mouth parts. So if we go to frame 30 here, you can see that the mandibles kind of part slightly, and the glia 
kind of wraps around the glossa as well as we have the uh, labial palps here kind of form the underside of the straw and so this is sort of my version of this diagram right here from snodgrass you can see the glia wrapping around here labial palps are underneath and then the glossa is in the middle so that's kind of what i have right here i have set it up so that um, it can actually retract this part but my rig for that that's what i'm going to call super janky but i'll just show you really quick if i turn on my curves one of the things is i have a lot of these controls in really stupid places but i'll fix that eventually but yeah if i uh, have like a glossa retract control so you can see as i slide this back and forth it can move that in and out the only problem is it comes out the other side and it just kind of like goes off into space here so that's something i got to work out if we, we're just looking at this view i think that works pretty well now if we take a look closer look there is this part in the center forms this little spoon like section right here that you can see the glossa wraps around I mean, this is really rudimentary geometry here but um, i'm not exactly sure you should check or or eventually i want to see how this part moves i'm guessing it kind of also retracts in and out as well so that's what I'm calling the rod, for lack of a better term. The retraction of the glossa, and then we have the glia wrapping around to form the straw. The mandible is parting a little bit so it can kind of cradle it on either side. And these parts right here, you can see this is sticking through right here, so that's not great. But um, obviously I need more information to figure out what's going on behind the scenes little janky right there but it gives you a little at least an idea of how we go into the drinking position so when the bee is not using its mouth part so for example when it's flying around it retracts the mouth parts into the head cavity and you can see in videos online you can see it folded back this one's not very elegant but it kind of folds back and if we take a look from the side it forms into basically like a Z-like pattern. So you have zoink, zoink, and zoink. And if we take a look at Snodgrass, you can see we have zoink, zoink, and zoink. So some things I gotta work out is exactly where these flexible parts are and if it's bending correctly and and so on. So they're, you know, it's not very neat, but it, it's, a, it's a start. And you can see that this is the biggest problem that I'm having right here is I gotta I gotta do a better rig for that. I have some ideas on how I'm, I'm gonna do that. But I wanted to get this video out so that we can proceed into the next video where we start talking about how the hair works. But it's kind of cool that mouth parts retract like that. The, the mouth parts retract like that. There's so many cool things in the anatomy of honeybees. I'm just barely getting started here. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed that kind of quick look at uh, the motion of the parts of the honeybee mouth. In the next video, we'll talk about the hair and uh, I'll also hopefully come up with some better solutions for the rig on the mouth. But got to start somewhere. All right. Thanks for watching.